visual. That was really cool. Wow. All right, I don't even need to do call to worship. You guys, that was just really cool. That was like the coolest intro I've ever seen. <laughs> well, good morning. My name is Julie. It's nice to see you. Ah. Oh, jeez, guys, thanks. Uh, I'm one of the mission, <laughs> I don't know what I do here. I do everything. Uh, I'm one of the mission directors here, and um, just wanted to say it is incredible to see all of your beautiful, shiny faces today. Um, now, this morning, um, uh, I was reading in Isaiah, and actually, I should probably start with yesterday. Uh, we went back to the uh, Cheswick Christian Academy, and we were finishing up some tiles there, and one of my friends, Tom, uh, there he is. Uh, Tom said, we said, How, how's your week been? And he's like, man, for being such a short week, it was such a long week. And I felt that in the core. I felt that in my heart as well. It has been a very uh, long, short week. And uh, everyone I talk to has kind of been going through the same thing. But something that's been really going with me that's been such a, a hard thing was... Um, being consumed with my technology, being consumed with my phone, being consumed with the news, being consumed with so many things that are happening around the world and in our own city, and just, it just is, it's killing me on the inside and I hate it. Does anybody else feel that way? Does anybody else feel completely drowned and smushed and, and like my, my, my fire has been put out, snuffed out? Well, this morning I was reading in Isaiah, and um, it's talking about the uh, the coming Assyrian invasion. How metal does that sound? Just like our really cool intro here. We have the Assyrians are coming in and they are, the Israelites, they're afraid. Okay? <laughs> they're afraid. Um, it's coming. The invasion is happening. Um, but there's a part, I need to move my notes here. There's a part, it says the Lord of Armies, the only refuge. Okay, this is Isaiah 8:11. For this is what the Lord has said to me with great power to keep me from going the way of this, of this people. He didn't say it in a whisper either. He said it with great power, okay? Do not call everything a conspiracy that these people say is a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be terrified. You are to regard only the Lord of armies as holy. You don't need to worry about what the news and the media say. You lift your eyes to heaven and speak to your father and he will tell you the truth. My friend was telling me, we were talking about agape love this morning and how it covers a multitude of sins, right? And she was telling me, 1 John 4, there is no fear in love. Love casts out all fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. And who is the perfecter of love? The God we are about to worship. So stand to your feet and worship however your heart may call you. Let's praise to him. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. the night.
lost another one. I am free. Come on, I am free. Ooh, I am free. He lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. I am free. He lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. I am free. Because you picked me up, you turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. Because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. mountain can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is
go If you're in it with me, I'll begin And when you say to jump, I'm diving in If you say be still, then I will wait If you say to trust, I will obey You're the only truth in life The way I'm done chasing feelings Spirit service where we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in prayer um, but I got a text last night saying that there is a dire need to pray for the vice principal of the Cheswick Christian Academy his name is Clint he had a heart transplant but his body is rejecting it so this morning we're gonna pray for a miracle as the body of Christ we're all believers we stand on the rock the rock is Jesus we stand on the healing power of our Jesus he took stripes so that all could be healed and Lord we pray right now we lift up Clint to you right now we pray for a miracle healing right now Jesus we say to that heart start beating we say to that heart blood flow through it we stay to any uh, blood clots be released now in the name of Jesus we say Clint arise out of that bed and walk we say immune system kick in the way you're supposed to right now we say medication rejection medication start to work right now in the mighty name of Jesus we call on your name Jesus you are the rock you are the one we look to you are the high tower when the righteous run into you you we are safe and we pray for a miracle right now in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for peace in that family now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord for your healing power right now thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus, for your miracle working power. Thank you for this heart, Lord Jesus, that is beginning to begin to work right now. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, the children are released. Welcome to Forged in Faith Church. We're so glad you're here today. Here at Forged in Faith Church, we want to be a home where everyone can be spirit-filled, love others, know God, and serve the world. If you are new here, please fill out a connect card located in the seat back in front of you so that we can let you know about life groups, upcoming events, and how to get connected. Just make sure you place it in the offering container before the end of service. You can also check out forgeinfaithchurch.com for more ways to be involved here at the Forge. We can't wait to get to know you better, and our prayer is that God speaks to you in a specific way this morning. We are all so excited to partner with you on your journey as we all become forged in faith. Giving is a central part of our church. Because God has been so generous to provide for our needs, it's our privilege to give towards His kingdom here on earth. Giving to the church supports the spread of the gospel, local and global missions, and church growth. Now we're making it easier than ever to give and manage your generosity. We now use Tithely Giving, 
a tool that makes it easy and convenient for you to give online, on a mobile app, or even with a text message. You can give on our website where you can make a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift with a credit card or a debit card or an ACH bank transfer. Enabling the cover fees option pays for the transaction processing costs so your church receives the full amount of your donation. Right from the website, you can manage your Tithely account. See a record of your giving and adjust your settings. You can also give with a Tithely mobile app by going to the Apple or Google Play Store searching for Tithely. Once you download the app, you can search for our church and make a quick and easy gift right from the app. As you enter your gift, we encourage you to consider setting up a recurring donation. Recurring donations help us plan for the future and make giving convenient and automatic for you. You can set up gifts to occur weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, whatever fits your schedule. And you can manage it all from our website or the app. By giving this way, your church can easily track your contributions for year-end tax receiving. And all your giving is encrypted, ensuring your safety and security. We are so excited about this new partnership with Tithely, and we hope that you love the fast and easy new way to give. Thank you for partnering with us as we advance the kingdom of God. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. My name is Vince. I'm the lead pastor here at Forged in Faith Church. It's wonderful to see you all here this morning. Uh, I'm up here with my dear friend, Ben. Uh, he is one of our missions directors. Everybody, let's welcome Ben. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, and it's so good to be here with you this morning. Uh, it's very good to be here with you, uh, especially if it's your first time here today. Uh, we're so excited that you are here on uh, this particular Sunday. Out of all the things you can do, because it's a huge day in the sporting world, and of course I'm talking about the kickoff of the September Basho. <laughs> I am really excited to see what Hoshoryu can do at the Ozeki ranking, and I'm sure, Vince, do you agree with that? Absolutely, Ben. Oh. I, yeah. I, I, whatever you're saying, it sounds like tongues. <laughs> I have no idea what, anyway, but sure. Oh, you guys all thought I was talking about the Steelers? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, that too, that too. Uh, not the sumo, that's really a niche thing. But we're excited that you are here with us this morning. If you could, when the offering containers come, take one of the connect cards that are in the seat front seat backs in front of you or around you. Take those out, fill them out, put them in the offering bucket so we can get to know you a little bit better. And after service as well, if it is your first time here, you can go over to that corner of the sanctuary underneath the lights, underneath the foundry sign. One of our greeters will put a special gift in your hand as a thank you for being here this morning. Um, and also, if you've been coming here for a little bit and haven't made this your home church yet, but you're kind of feeling like you would like to, after service today, you can go to that back corner and you can have what is called Next Steps. Now that is an informal conversation with Pastor Vince. I've had several of them over my, day, over my years here. Um, they're not scary, I promise you. Just keep that in mind. And it's an informal meeting with him where we could talk about what our church is, what we believe, where we're going, what our vision is for the church. And we can also get to know you and what your interests are and how you'd like to fit into the life uh, here at The Forge. That's right. And as you heard in that video that we just showed just a few moments ago, this is a really great day because we can finally give our offerings directly to Forged in Faith Church. Yay. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Kind of one of the last final steps of our kind of our, our ability to be able to be independent and have the freedom to pursue what God wants us to pursue. A couple of things I wanted to share with you about that, first of all. As they're coming around and actually giving, giving the, uh, the, uh, taking the offerings even at this moment, I did want to just share with you that, um, the, uh, that if you've written your check already to Allison Park Church, that's okay. That's all right. We can still take those. But we're putting these new systems in place so over the next three weeks we can get this done because after October 1st, absolutely all things need to be coming to Forged in Faith. Now, uh, you can write your checks to Forged in Faith or you can prepare a, uh, if you use a bank draft, your bank just asking that this week you would make sure that you change that so it's made out to Forged in Faith Church and that you make sure your bank is sending it to our mailing address. P.O. Box 45, Russellton, here in Russellton. That's on our website. Make sure that you call your bank to make all those changes so that we're able to receive those donations as well. And then as far as the app things, as far as the things they were talking about in that video, if you look up behind me here, you see these two icons up here. You have two ways on apps that you can give. First, if you go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and you just 
just hit, uh, you just put in Tithely, the green icon will appear. You can go ahead and download that. That handles just giving, and you can set up your giving. You have to log in, create an account, put in your financial information just once, and after that, it'll always be in there. And then uh, there's another one. If you put in Tithely Church app, that blue icon appears. You can download that. And that is our actual church app. It actually is, it has a home screen. It has all the different things that you would be able to do here at the church. Specifically for us, you can sign up for events, find out what's going on, see announcements, submit prayer requests, take notes. And it's even a Bible version that you're able to utilize there too as well, sermons and videos and so on. You can also give on that app as well. It'll take you from your browser to a website where you'd be able to give there too. All right, so, so thank you so much. Go through this process. If you have any questions, questions, then Alicia is going to be in the back next to a little sign about giving back there at the end of the service. She can actually walk you through those things, answer any questions you may have so that we're able to get all of these things straightened out and done over the next few weeks. All right. And coming up, if you have... <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have committed your life to Jesus Christ um, and you have not gone water baptized yet, that is an important thing to do. Um, it is... We are going to be having those in two weeks on September 24th. Um, and baptism is just a step of faith to publicly declare that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, we will have everything that you will need for that. We will have a big heated tub over here. We'll have a change of clothes, some towels. You'll even get a signed certificate afterwards. And this is for anybody who believes in Jesus Christ. And if they can state of their own accord that, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. So this is all ages. Um, usually you can say that, hey, I believe in Jesus Christ around the age of eight or so. So everybody who has done that is welcome to. Even if you've been baptized as a baby and that was more of a declaration of your parents' faith than your faith, you're welcome to join, to take part in this. And that will be after each service on September 24th. And this Wednesday is Testifier! Yeah! Ooh. We're so excited for this. Testifier is a time that's got two of them this month, both this Wednesday and next Wednesday. Start at 6.30. We're going to come on out here. We're going to worship at an extended time of worship. We're going to lift up our hands and our hearts. We're going to raise up swords and battle axes and just tear down the strongholds of the enemy. It is going to be an amazing time of worship and pressing into God's presence. He is going to specifically do a significant work we press into him for healing and for miracles. Great teaching, a wonderful time. We're actually going to ordain several of the people here that are prepared and ready to become pastors. And the following week, we have Richard Rockhind, and we have Brian Lippert leading worship. It is going to be such an amazing two weeks. You want to invite everybody that you know, whether they know Jesus or not, to come and experience the power of God in an atmosphere of total freedom. That's what we want to do on Wednesday. I can't wait to see you all there, 6.30 this week. All right, ladies, and we are getting set to kick off our women's ministry here at the Forge, and it is called Empower Her. <laughs> Tried so hard not to say cower power because the Steelers are on my mind today, but it is called <laughs> Empower Her. Um, we are going to kick this off with a breakfast on uh, the morning of September 16th, and what that will look like is um, there will be a lot of the leaders of this ministry sharing vision for it, what it's going to look like, what to expect from it. And they'll also be able to get to know you. You can get to know each other. Just a good time of connection over breakfast. Um, and that'll be again September 16th. And you can register on the website, fortuneandfaithchurch.com, on the app, or we even have a paper sign up in the back. And we're really looking forward to get this off the ground for you ladies. All right. I'm sorry. I'm getting an indication that my microphone needs to be adjusted again. Sorry about that. So just give me a second while I adjust my accoutrements. Yes, entertain yourselves. The Holy Roman Empire was neither holy nor Roman. Discuss. Anyway, no. um, <laughs> what about the Byzantine Empire? <laughs> That's a whole other subject. All right. All right. Um, all right. So um, we've already uh, talked significantly about giving at this time. And actually, the ushers already did come along and take your offerings. I just wanted to take a moment just to thank you for all of your generosity. Thank you for making sure that your giving gets to us in these next few weeks so that we're prepared for all those expenses in October. And without your generosity, we would not be able to do all of the things that you've heard about this morning, plus so many new things that you're going to be hearing about both the rest of the today as well as even into the next few weeks. So just thank you so much. Pray about what God would have you give and just do so. All right, everybody, we've got a short little video here um, that's going to play as an introduction to the message, and then I'll be right back. Thank you. OK, 
okay, my daughter's coming up here, but she needs a microphone. <laughs> okay, so let's get a mic. Somebody have a microphone? I can yell really loud. <laughs> After all, she can. She's my daughter. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go, kiddo. All right. Okay, so you've, you've met, some, most of you know Isabella. She is our youth director, and uh, she actually preached and brought an incredible word. People are still talking about it from a couple of months ago on Jonah. And um, I, th I think your stool is like higher than mine. I need to say I'm kind of insecure. Anyway, but um, uh, having said that, um, this is a new series that we're starting today, and it's called First to Fierce. So if you see all the various different things around here, these props, we love doing these props here at the Forge, they kind of reinforce the message in these subtle ways and help us to kind of remember what it is that God is, is trying to communicate to us through our messages. And um, what we have here today, if you notice, there's like a mountain over there, and it's like the little guys climbing up. And it's, it's, it's about, and how it relates to first to fierce, is that this month we're preaching on knowing God. Now this is a spirit-filled month. The mission of our church, what we've come to embrace, all right, our vision is heaven on earth for all, but our mission is to forge spirit-filled followers of Jesus, not me, not us, but Jesus, who know God, who love others, and serve the world. So this is a spirit-filled month, right? We're worshiping God. i got testifier. But we're preparing for next month where we're going to really focus on knowing God and the ministries we're doing, and we wanted to teach into that. So as a matter of knowing God, this is called first to fierce. And so there's certain times when God is going to have us like be climbing mountains. It's something that God speaks about in the scriptures. There are other times in which God is having us run a race. And uh, we might be using our will in both of those capacities. And so first to fierce is like this process in which we're building from where we start first to become the fierce person of God, the woman, the man of God who's loved by him, fierce in the kingdom to be able to, to storm the gates of hell and be able to see his will take place on this earth. Some of that is a matter of willpower, climbing mountains and, uh, and competing and running races, right, engaging. But there's another part of it too, and this is represented by this over here with these plants here, you see these little seeds and you've got these tiny little plants and these bigger plants and then a really big plant. Part of the initiative of First to Fierce is also something that's done really by the Holy Spirit. It's the will of God that does this in our hearts. He grows us. And, and both of those things are going on at the same time. So there's a process to go from being first to fierce. But then there's also a little bit of a desire to be the first one to run the race, to climb the mountain, and do what God calls you to do as the scriptures encourage us to do. So we're going to be launching a new ministry, one that's going to, be, uh, that's going to actually be one that will be taking place every year. And this one is called Bar and Bat Baraka. Everybody say that, Bar and Bat Baraka. Okay, this has nothing to do with President Obama, I promise you. It's something about Barack. Okay, this is, though, this, is, this is, is based on the bar and bat mitzvah. But the bar and bat mitzvah in Jewish, that actually means, uh, or excuse me, in Hebrew, that means a son or daughter of the law. That's what it means. They would learn the law. 11 to 13-year-olds in the Jewish tradition, they would learn the law, study the scripture, memorize the Torah, be able to present that, and then they are commissioned as now received as adults into their congregations and into the temple. Well, we have bar and bat baraka. This is a ministry that I created at the church that I was at, called Covenant Church of Pittsburgh. And it's what bar and bat baraka means in the Hebrew is sons and daughters of blessing. And we're no longer of the law, we are of the blessing of God upon our lives. And so we take 11 to 13 year old students and we put them into a ministry where they are intensively discipled for a year. They meet every week on Sunday during one of the services and we encourage them to memorize, uh, we're memorizing scripture. They memorize um, the Westminster Catechism, except I've rewritten it to be from a spirit-filled perspective. They memorize an, the Apostles' Creed, but again, it's been rewritten so that it represents a spirit-filled perspective. 
And they learn these concepts. They also learn their identity in Christ. They learn their spiritual gifting. And they learn not just the basic foundations of the faith, but even some of the more deeper theological considerations so that they can really stand on their own faith and their own belief prepared for the seasons in their life to come. And then finally, they are celebrated as well. We'll talk more, talk more about that celebration in just a moment, but Isabella happened to be a part of the very first bar and bat baraka that I ever did back at Covenant. We did several of them. Those are some of our pictures. I'm jealous of how much hair I had back then. But you see my little sweet 12-year-old girl back there. It's absolutely amazing. She would have just turned 13 there. She's so wonderful. And I got to tell you, it is such an amazing thing to think that that little 12, 13-year-old girl that went through that is now this young woman next to me, who's my youth pastor, who's now going to teach our first bar and bat baraka at our church. That's pretty amazing. So, awful lot of me talking, I know. Not so, now she's up here. Okay, thank you so, for being so patient and listening to me talk. You're used to that, I know. All right, so here we go. Um, so... <laughs> I have a couple of questions. So, so when you went through Bat Baraka, when you went through that ministry, uh, what was the most uh, valuable thing that you think you, 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 uh, you received from having gone through that ministry? So um, I think around that age, it's pretty normal to start questioning uh, what you were brought up in. You start gaining that independence and that free thought. This is why this is such a cool thing to have at this time, um, because I think that something that for, for me personally, when I was going through this and I was questioning, I was like, why do I believe in God? Why do we know this is real? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I think that it helped um, transfer my faith to mom and dad told me to believe in God to I believe in God because of the evidence that I see. And it could become um, something that uh, my faith was like given to me to my faith is my own. Yeah, yeah. And um, what do you think, uh, what is the most memorable part of the uh, Bob Baraka ministry for you? Most memorable is... Um, uh, there's there's this kinship that developed between me and my classmates. I still get, this was at a previous church, I still get together with many of them as adults and we still catch up and we, we're all at very different stages of life now, but we still come and talk because of the foundation that was built in that class. These are literally lifelong friends that we're making, so. That's cool. What was one thing that you remember learning that you still still know now that you learned during that time? So uh, one thing that I definitely remember, so oh, he mentioned the Westminster Catechisms and how they were rewritten. The first one, first and foremost, is what is the ultimate purpose of mankind? And the answer is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And that might, you know, you hear that and you're like, yeah, okay. But like what, but what the meaning of that is just so amazing because there are so many times in my life, and I'm sure we can all relate, where I have struggled with my purpose. And I'm like, I don't know what the next step is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You just feel very lost and trapped and almost like drowning in the mundaneness of life. And there, that catechism of um, what is my ultimate purpose is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. So as long as I'm doing that, <laughs> the rest will follow. And that has just been like such a foundational thing throughout my life. And that's just one. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's so cool. All right, well, what I just want to do now, now is just, just kind of turn it over to you. If you would just, what, what do you want to communicate to parents or grandparents who might be considering coming to the next week's parent meeting and, and, and whether or not to sign their child up for this? What do you want to say to them? Uh, or even the kids here. What, what do you, we just turn it over to you. What do you want to say? This class had a lasting impact on my life, and um, especially if you have your first teenager, but even if you have had teenagers, you know that as we go into the stage of them being teenagers, there's there's an interesting strain that happens on your relationship. It's very normal where you're like, it's just like you feel like you're constantly battling because they want their independence, but you're still their parent. And that can leave some gaps in your relationship or maybe some distance. This is what he, like how he mentioned how um, the parents get to say in front of the entire church, this is my son or daughter who I'm, and whom I am well pleased. You never leave doubt in your, your kid's mind that they are, 
uh, that if you're proud of them or if you love them, because that's just such an, it's an easy, natural thought to occur during this stage, but to present them like this at the beginning of this and say, listen, no matter what happens from here on out, I'm still proud of you, <laughs> and I still love you, and I believe in your future, and I am so proud of everything you've done to get here, and that has lasting effects, not only just for this stage, but for the rest of their lives, which is just priceless. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Now, I want to talk a little bit about that ceremony here. Believe me, this is relevant to the message that I'm preaching today. It's directly relevant, which is why we're talking about it now. It's kind of the introduction to the message. I want to talk about that ceremony that Isabella just indicated there. So you see some of the pictures up there that are a part of it. So when they go through this year-long process, then on a Saturday, we have all the family, we encourage all the families to send out formal invitations, almost like a wedding, to everybody that they know, a family from around the country. They all come in, and we will have a massive dinner for their whole family, catered in absolutely beautiful. I've heard of this amazing company called Cracked Egg that's willing to donate their... No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 never on. I want to pay. I want to pay over here. That's going to come in here, an amazing chef over here, Gino. And he, they're going to um, do this. We, we celebrate these kids with this dinner and their families. And we, every single child that goes through receives multiple gifts, including one of them is a ring, has a scripture and their name within it that shows the dedication uh, they have made now to God in this process. And the next day on Sunday, Day, during one of our church services, we celebrate them and we present them to the church. It's one of the most significant days of the entire year. One of the, that church, one of the absolute most well-attended days of the entire year. Because let me just give you an insight. You won't hear this again until then. But this is what happens at one point at the conclusion. First of all, the kids come up here and they present their, what they've memorized. You hear them all saying the Apostles' Creed, the things they believe. They're asked the catechism questions and you are like, there is hope for the world. Let me tell you when you hear kids being able to say that. But um, on one side of the platform, each one of them comes out individually with their parents. You got mom and you got dad there. And uh, at that point, mom speaks over how wonderful it was to raise their child, the things that they see in them and they have observed and learned in them, the things they believe that God has deposited within them. And then if they have mom and dad, then dad does this. If it's just mom, if it's a single uh, parent home or just dad or what have you, then they do this themselves and they'll do both parts of it. But symbolically, then dad takes a hold of their, their, their child's hand and walks them across the stage away from mom and uh, dad speaks out over that child's future and what they believe they're going to become <laughs> and all they're going to do. <laughs> and they, they, they speak that out. Sorry, it's just the memories are flooding back here. So they, uh, they say that and then they end it by grabbing their child's hand and they bring them forward and they would say, in this case, they would say, Fortune Faith Church, I, this is my son, or this is my daughter, and they name them, and they say, in whom I am well pleased. And then they step off of the stage, and they take their seat in the front row of the church, capable of any role of leadership in the church, because they have gone through a full year of determined discipleship with their own faith as the product of it. So isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, it's one of those things that when you see it, it's like, oh man, I wish somebody had done that for me, right? So, make sure if you know, have a child or a grandchild, you know, if they, maybe they come to the church, maybe they don't come to church, you go and sign them up, come to that parent or grandparent meeting next week in between the services, you get a chance to have all your questions answered, you can register for that online or you can just show up next week and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks so much, honey, I love you. I'm well pleased with you. <laughs> all right. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the content of the message here. Um, so, uh, going to just kind of lay a basic foundation for where we are, just based on the time that we have remaining here. Just a basic foundation of this first to fierce message that I have introduced for you guys. So let's go straight into the scripture now. This is from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. It says this, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. 
What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come to in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. So, my main idea for this message really isn't, um, and, and I isn't a statement. The main idea of this, this, this message is a question, and that is this. What is a disciple of Jesus really? What does it really mean to be a disciple of of Jesus? What does it mean to follow him? What does it mean to climb the mountain, to run the race? What does it mean to be grown by the Holy Spirit? Now, all healthy things grow, and it's like plants, if they're healthy, they grow. God can initiate that process within us, but there's not just, not just something that is a, a, like a, a worldly thought. There is also a supernatural aspect to it. So what does it mean to be able to be discipled by Jesus, both in terms of what we can see and learn, as well as supernaturally? And let's go back to that scripture there and look at it again at the top there. Here's the first truth that I want us to consider with it, and that is this. That growing as a disciple will always require self-denial in increasing measure. Verse 24 says this pretty plainly, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So, have to take up their cross and follow him. They must deny themselves in order to follow what it is that God wants. They have to be willing to turn away from what the world offers and instead abide by what God has placed in front of them. You know, the disciples or the people of the, the early church took this word disciples so seriously that not immediately, not in the scriptures, but the, the, after the apostles, those people in the, the, that we read the scriptures from, that wrote the scriptures, the people the, from that earliest part of the church, once they were martyred, then the early church, they, they actually went so far as considering and so significant, remembering Jesus' words here, that they would not refer to someone as a disciple Unless, except for those who had been martyred. It's the only ones that they would consider truly a disciple. That's how significantly and how much weight they placed in this statement. However, however, that changed, of course, because then, you know, they had already died. They went back. The scriptures actually refer to disciples. That changed over time. But it shows the weight of this. This is how important it is. Look around the world. There is no longer an opportunity. There is no longer a, a luxury of, of only just doing it halfway. There's no longer room for those who are just going to say, well, when I can fit it in, when I can get to it. That's not what God is looking for in this time. He said it to the disciples. He said it to the same thing to us now. The standards never change. He said, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to grow, if you want to be first to fierce, if you want to reach the fulfillment of all that God wants for you, then you have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. It's always going to require self-denial in increasing measure. Now, I know that you hear that truth. That's a hard truth. But let me tell you, as we go through the series, there's going to be wonderful things to celebrate. We're going to get to them in just a minute here. But there's also no more opportunity, as I said before, to blow smoke. We've got to be real and genuine. And our faith from now on needs to be Something that is we can stand on with everything within us. So, second truth I want to contemplate now is this. God rewards those who grow. 
He said so right there. He says in verse 27, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. So God rewards those who take up their cross and follow him. Now there he is referring to, of course, the most obvious and most most on-point interpretation, of course, is the reference to when Jesus returns, then everybody is rewarded in that way. But in just a moment, he actually also speaks of the kingdom, of him being being, uh, present in the kingdom, and the kingdom being present on earth. So when God is talking about, when Jesus is speaking in this whole passage about the kingdom, we're reminded that after this moment, he began to preach like this. He said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then he would say, the kingdom of God is like. Now, when he spoke those parables, he spoke about very practical things. He spoke about relationships. He spoke about our relationship to God. He even talked about money at times. The kingdom of God is like. And when we read those things, we see that we can clearly relate to them, not in terms of like when Jesus returns, but we can relate to them right now. So what does that pronounce? It says the kingdom of God is here. The king is with us. Therefore, the reward that he also wants to bestow is with us. What does that look like then for those of us who are just determined to be first to fierce? Those, what does it look like? It looks like this. When you talk about taking up your cross, denying yourself and following him, you're often talking about avoiding turning away from the sin or the distraction of the world. This is a term you may have heard before. We say this, it's about repentance. Repentance literally means to turn completely around to turn away from. Now, there is this aspect that is absolutely true of denying yourself your own desires, what would give you pleasure in a sinful way, or at least even in a way that might distract you from who he is. But the beautiful reward that is promised throughout all of Scripture is this, that when we turn away from the world, we are turning into the heart and the face of a God who dearly loves us. The reward comes from knowing and seeing and hearing and understanding and growing in the love of God. And when that love overtakes us, we begin to respond and fall in love back with this Father who supports us, who strengthens us, who shows us his will, who affirms us and tells us, reminds us how pleased he is in us. When he does those things, we fall more in love with him and anyone who falls deeply in love with the world. The more you fall deeply in love with God, the less attractive any sin is. When you know who you are in him, it firmly and permanently causes you not only to deny yourself, but to desire to deny yourself. You want to, because you know the more that you do, the more that he comes in. The reward is promised, and the reward is real for those who are determined to run the race first to fierce. Here's the final truth for today. final truth is this. For those who are growing as disciples, every circumstance of life is an initiation. Let's talk about that some more. First, let's talk about that last verse that I mentioned to you about the kingdom. 28 says this, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man uh, coming in his kingdom. Now, a lot of people read that and they're very confused because the people that he's talking to are dead. And they think that he's referring to when he returns. It's like, well, how is that possible? Well, it's because of this unfortunate thing called chapter breaks. Um, There are chapters now that weren't there at the time when it was written in Aramaic. And so uh, when you you read it through, the very next verse, it goes on to speak about a very famous and momentous thing that is exactly what Jesus was referring to then. It says this in the next verse in 17, one says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face 
face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. In him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Now, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to deal with this passage in a, lot, in a much more significant way. There's just one light little point that I want to make here about one particular aspect of this momentous thing that we sometimes refer to as the transfiguration. What I just said, that Jesus had just said, truly I tell you, some are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then just six days later, he takes three of his disciples. They go up to the top of the highest peak in Israel, Mount Hermon. When they finally get up to the top of this, it's, it's, it's snow-capped during much of the year. Can you imagine the arduous journey of just following Jesus? Just take up your cross and follow me. And they're following Jesus up this extremely high mountain. They don't even know why. They finally get up to the top. And what do they witness? This blessing and this reward of this eternal manifestation of this moment in history where Jesus was literally transfigured. And they were the ones. Because they followed him all the way up that mountain that had an opportunity to see it. But let me point out, Jesus said it would happen, and then just a short while later, and he said it in a way that they didn't even probably understand what in the world he was talking about, but then just six days later when they saw that, they said, now I know what he's talking about. See, God knew this. This is amazing. Let me tell you, point out one other instance of a scripture that we just studied just a few moments ago, and that was when he said, take up your cross and follow me. Let me tell you guys, back in those days, they weren't hanging out talking about crucifixion all the time. That was a torturous, terrifying, awful thing. So when he said, take up your cross and follow me, they were like, what? They don't even talk about that. What in the world do you mean that that's what I have to do? They didn't understand it. But when Jesus was hanging on the cross, then they remembered. Then they understood now they knew what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus. Here's what that means for a father that loves each one of us, that is expressing his love and his good, pleasing with good pleasure in each one of us. This is what it means. He loves you and he will speak into your future circumstances, into what he has destined you to experience with him. When he does that, you may not understand necessarily what he's saying. But when you arrive at that moment that he himself told you he was purposing you for, you will say to yourself, wow, God knew this the whole time. We often come to points in our life and we say, you know what, God is, God is, we want God to be here with us. And he is. But the reality is, is he's always been there. My old, one of my old pastors phrased it in this way, he said, God is always previous. So let's go back to that moment again. So, so he speaks into your life. You're standing in that place. You said, oh, God spoke to me about this. He spoke into me about this. Maybe it was into your own spirit because you read the word of God. You saw a revelation. God began to speak to you. He spoke to you in a vision. He spoke to you in a dream. He spoke to you in a way in which you could hear and understand. Something that about your future, or you have this unction and feeling and just this determination. This isn't just a human idea. I believe this is what God has for me. And so you begin to pray about that and stand on that. And then it happens. You say, God has been with me. God has known the whole thing. Here's the great reward of this whole process of being first and then becoming fierce. Here it is. When you're in that moment and you've experienced God being with you in that way, then how does it change the perspective of everything that you've been through since? When you show up at a moment that God told you would take place, and now you're looking back at your life, that means that he was in each and every one of those experiences. So what does that mean for you today? That means no matter how challenging, how difficult, how frustrating, how, how uh, disheartening some of the circumstances that you might currently be facing today, 
Every last one of them is simply a matter of what God is using to initiate you into that future moment that he has already determined. You are not experiencing anything just because. Everything that each one of us who have turned away from the world, taken up our cross, followed him, every single one of the circumstances we face is not about right now. It is about, it is about where he is sending us. He knows where it is. And because he loves you, he is going to speak into that. And when we have faith, to believe in His goodness, to receive His love, and to know that no matter what happens, God is going to use it to initiate me into the next season. It can give us the, the ability, the strength to stand as a true disciple of Jesus. So that's the foundation that I'm laying for the whole series. Next week, Pastor Bob is going to be preaching. He has an amazing announcement to make. Yeah, you're going to love it. He's got a great word. He's an incredible teacher. And he's announcing yet another new branch of ministry that we're going to do here at the Forge that will help us know God better, no matter whether we are just starting out and we're down here kind of first, or we've been walking for a while and experienced a great deal with God and are closer to maybe feel maybe in a place we wouldn't say it about ourselves but maybe we are fierce in the kingdom no matter where we are in our process there is going to be a way for each one of us to come to know God more here at the forge and we'll be talking about that next week in Bob's message now what I want to do today as the worship team comes out is I want to ask you another question we began this message with a the question is our main idea what is a disciple of Jesus, really? So here's the question, probably the relevant question for all of us today in this world, in this moment of time, with all that everybody's facing and all that we see. Here's the question. Are you really willing to be a disciple? Are you really willing to lay down to lay down the things of this world, to take up your cross, to follow Him? Are you willing to put all of the things aside for the pursuit of the love of God? Are you willing to be obedient to what He tells you to do? To go and engage in the disciplines of reading the Word of God and praying and communicating with Him and doing all of those things on a continual basis. But are you willing to be someone who believes that God is who He says that He is and that His goodness and His love is eternal and immeasurable and limitless and you can access it anytime you need to lead you into the next season that He's already planned for your victory? Are you willing to be a disciple? If you are, then I want to encourage you to say this prayer with me. There may have been someone here, maybe you haven't ever really committed your heart to God and say, I want to do it. I want to take up my cross, take up my cross and follow you, God. Maybe it's been a long while and you've spent your life pretty much with one foot in and one foot out. You've been dancing in the light and the dark. And now you're saying, I don't want that anymore. I want to be a disciple. Then I encourage you to say this prayer after me. Everybody, why don't you bow your heads, close your eyes. Why don't you just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I turn away from the sin of my life and into your love. Speak to me, God. Guide me, God. Give me victory, God. I want to be your disciple. I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, if you've never said that prayer before or a prayer like it, all of heaven is rejoicing over that decision. They are rejoicing that you have laid down and that you have picked up. God, they, are, they are saying your name at this time. What we're going to do is we're going to turn to worship God in this moment, to place Him on the throne, to affirm this commitment that we've made. And I'm going to bless you. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's stand and worship, everyone.
this is my offering in every moment I withhold nothing I'm learning to trust you even when Thank you.